So this again was the 600T that we'll be installing it in. As you can see, it has a uh, H50 installed up here in the rear exhaust fan area. And we'll be removing that. I probably won't be showing it because many of you have different coolers and could probably not care less on how to remove an old cooler. Now before we begin, always disconnect the power or flip the power switch in the back of your power supply to the off position and leave it plugged in. This lets you keep the chassis and by uh, proxy the other components through your motherboard grounded. Alright, now that I removed the H50, I'm going to remove the top fan. There's four screws holding that in. Multitask. Now, I think the problem I'm going to have is like the H100. The entire radiator and fan assembly alone will not fit underneath this grill, so I'm going to have to separate the fans from the radiator. Is it still connected? Fans from the radiator to, uh, in order to fit the radiator on the, on the underneath, on the underside of this mesh right here. There we go. And I am going to disconnect the rear power to this fan which is this one. All right, that is removed. So let's get to uh, removing the fans from the H220. I'm going to be using my uh, Gentle Typhoons. These are the AP15 models, AP15 with uh, what you call it, a uh, 18, I think it's 1,850 RPM, max RPM. Um, so yeah, these should actually perform pretty well, I think, on the H220. Sorry, Swift Deck, I am going to go with these for now, in the meantime, since these are pretty uh, tried and true. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and modify, or actually remove the fans from the H220. And it looks like you're going to need a, a small Phillips screwdriver in order to get to these screws. So I have that right here. All right, uh, hopefully this is going to work, and it does. Now Swiftec was kind enough to actually braid these for you from the factory, so it's actually really neat, fortunately. With my 600T, I cannot keep it in this configuration, so let's take these off. And I think these two fans are spliced together, but we'll see. So, because it only has one header, actually never mind, it has two, uh, two fan connectors on it, so they're not spliced together. Sleeved. I actually, you know, come to think of it, I might use these as my, one of these as my exhaust fan. Since my uh, ASUS board, ASUS, ASUS board has more than one PWM header, so I can control my exhaust fan via software. That's pretty sweet. I also bought a bunch of these fans actually from Amazon, the non PWM versions. You can get these for these Helix fans for about six bucks a piece, which is really cheap, and it's actually a lot cheaper than it's actually a lot cheaper than uh, a lot of case fans nowadays. And this is not oh, one screw left. Felt loose, but I guess not. All right, there you have it. The H100, or I'm sorry, the names are so similar. H220 with the fans removed and again the fins are in perfect condition 
no bent fins. It looks like there's some casting like reflection, but in this area, but don't worry, those those actually aren't bent. Just the finish on the fins make it look like there's some kind of discrepancy. Alright, so now that the fans are removed from the H20, let's go ahead and throw this in my case. Alright, so I placed my two fans in position. And we're gonna be have to we're gonna have to use those long screws that I showed you earlier in order to mount through the uh, the case. So let me get those. These screws, these silver ones. So I'm gonna set my pump down here. I'm not gonna bother mounting that yet. And I am just going to see. Let me see if I can see this. Uh, I'll take a picture or I'll shoot an angle of the clearance in a bit. I'm gonna remove one of these fans, eyeball the mounting uh, location. Oh, it is going very close to the uh, 8 pin. Eight pin, oh please let me be able to fit this in here. You know what? I can't fit it this way with the uh, tubes in the front unless I mount this off center from the uh, original original mounting locations. Because that there's a USB header thing. I can't move this rearward, rear ward, rearward, um, because the reservoir is there, unfortunately. So let's flip this around. Uh oh. Uh oh. Tiny Tim Logan's not gonna like this configuration. Uh, flip it around. Make sure the pump is gonna be giving enough slack to the pump. I don't want that stressed out. And I think we can do it this way. Yes. Hold on, I saw the hole. I mean, I'm able to get the hole here on the farthest, closest to the motherboard, so that's pretty much a given. It's going to work. And yeah, it lines up. So, 600T owners with the P8Z68 motherboard from ASUS, you're going to have to mount the tubes at the back and leave the reservoir in the front because there's just no clearance on that unless you modify a case which I'm not willing to do. Alright, so they're lined up. Let's get some screws in there. Alright. Cope with these rubber grommets. I can, it's not going to be too much trouble putting these through. Oh, is it too much? The 600T has these rubber grommets to uh, isolate vibration, and I think these might be getting in the way into properly screwing these in. I think it is. I wonder if my H50 screws will fit. The scary thing is I don't think there's a lot of threads holding that thing in. So I'm going to need several screws before I even think of removing my hand. Sweet. Yeah, so that went in fine. 
unfortunately, sometimes cases are all different. They can't really account for all of them. I just wish these screws were a little longer. That's not a big deal. It's still installed. All right, right now I'm actually, I have my rear fan mounted. It's one of the SwiftTech PWM fans. I am threading the connector through the back side and then plugging it into my P8Z67's optional CPU fan header, which I'll be controlling through software, so. Cases, so, the, uh, at least the layout. Um, so there we go. That's the clearance I have on the uh, the eight pin connector. It's really tight, but it works. So people kind of uh, waiting on that. There's a fan for the exhaust header. The radiator um, reservoir is right here on this side. And I'm gonna have, see the thing is, oh, oh no. I think I scratched a little bit of the paint off, which is unfortunate. Um, trying to fit this through here, it's the sharp little, that uh, that block of USB ports right there, that sharp corner by the, uh, oh, my hand's holding the, the light. But that topmost bunch of UB, USB ports, I think scratched that. And not a big deal, no one's really gonna see that. I can just probably sharpie it. But now you know, um, that's how you should mount it with this motherboard. All right, so let's get the bracket off of the pump. I think it's just simply screwed in. So there you have it. There's the uh, Intel mounting bracket with the adhesive. Okay, we have the uh, we have the backplate installed. Sorry I didn't show that, the process, but it's essentially the same as the uh, H100 bracket installation. You just move the thread, the nuts built into the bracket into position, and then you peel off the adhesive and stick it to the back side of the motherboard. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I'm sure if you have any questions, just leave it in the comments and I can try to help you with that. So let's go ahead and install the, uh, or apply the thermal paste. And we're gonna be using their included thermal paste, the Timmate. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line down the center. Time to pull the trigger. Uh, sorry, I'm just gonna steady my hand with both hands. Oh boy, I actually put a lot. That came out a lot more uh, fluidly than I thought it would. All right, so let's go ahead and start screwing one down.
and bottomed out. All right, sorry for that. It's not as clean as the H100, definitely. Whoops. The uh, installation is not as clean, I would say, as the H100, uh, mainly because the brackets aren't pre aren't fixed; they're sliding, so you have to kind of adjust them properly. And unfortunately, it's really hard to do that because they move a lot. It's just an annoyance, to be honest with you. I'm gonna tuck these tubes out of the way. So I think oh, I could probably route I could probably route the tubing so it comes up top and down. But I'll do it see that for another time. And uh this looks like it's solidly in there. And we're good to go. Let's go ahead and test it. Alright, I pretty much have everything hooked up. Um, I didn't record connecting the PWM uh, splitter, but it's pretty straightforward. Plug in the Molex connector in the PWM splitter, connect the pump to the red uh, marked um, header on the splitter, and then connect the outgoing PWM connector to the motherboard where the uh, CPU um, header fan header is. And I think it's more or less installed. There's a lot of connections to make. Uh, installation is not as easy as the H100, but not a big deal. I mean, we're all mod we're all do-it-yourselfers. We can deal with it. All right, so I'm gonna flip the power supply switch on, <laughs> and I, don't th I think it's we're good to go there. All the fans are connected, I believe, and it's powered on. I hear water moving. And I hear the pump going. And it's, I've, from what I've heard, it's gonna gurgle for at least a couple of minutes. And uh, quiet down as the air cycles through the loop. I'll probably also need to slow down the pump also because it's running much faster than what you would find in the H100i. All right, I'll put it back together and throw some uh, Pro95 at it and uh, come back with the results.